Hey friends, Cami Baker here. You want to know how to get on the road for less than $10,000. Just go ahead and make your dream come true and you want to get past some things that might hold you up. I'm going to show you around my rig some of the things that I've learned in the last 10 months of being on the road and ways to get around it. So I'm starting in the cab, which I've got my, let me flip it around and show so I've got the, uh, I don't know what they call this thing, but it, it, it keeps the, the cab more cool. But the reason I'm in here, I want to show you this. This is an add-on. This is a 2000, my rig is a 2000 um, Coachman Leprechaun. And this camera, I'll show you when we get to the back, is just a Bluetooth camera that I put on the back for about 80 bucks. And when my when my motorcycle is on the back I can see it it's it's in this so this is what I use when I'm driving so that I can see behind me it plugs into the lighter I just unplug it when I'm parked so that it doesn't run the battery down and that's how I get around not having a built-in backup camera this speaker has been a godsend so as you can see this bad boy doesn't really even have a radio. There's actually a, a face plate that goes on that radio, but it's a crap ass radio. So I thought, what am I gonna do? But you know what? I got this really cool thing here. It plugs into the cigarette lighter. It's got some places to charge my phone. It holds my phone right here for GPS. And I put on that speaker and I'm jamming in here like I had a $10,000 uh, sound system. So that's really cool. Also, this is my security system. So I got one of these arm things that I put on. Um, having said that, I feel really, really, I feel so safe in these RV resorts. I most of the time don't even put that on, but I did get it. So I'll put it on just in case. Now you'll notice I've got a curtain right here. This keeps the AC in here. Let me turn this off. I started up every now and then to make sure my battery doesn't run down. So because of this curtain, I stay super cool in here with the AC. And then also when I'm in the living quarters, it can stay cooler because I'm keeping that shut. So this is a class C and up here is a bunch of my junk now um, because I've got it covered. I just kind of use it for storage up there. But isn't that cool to just put up a curtain and keep it separate so that the AC stays back here and it stays nice and clean. People ask me about internet and that was a big uh, concern of mine. How do I have internet? So Verizon hotspot, um, I already have Verizon phone. So having the hotspot is $20 for 30 gigs. And then I got a second card to go in here that is another 30 gigs for 50% of that, so $10. So basically for $30 a month, I have 60 gigs of hotspot. But that's not enough for me because I do a lot of stuff on video. So I got this one from T-Mobile. And this one, if I had known about this before I got those, I would have just got this. But I have run out of this too. So this has a hundred gig and it's 50 bucks a month. I think it was $150 to buy the device. But between the two of them, I have more internet than I need in a 30 day period. And, um, and they work pretty much anywhere. The only place I've had real issue with internet for some bizarre reason is in Orlando, Florida. There's millions of people coming and going out of there. I don't know what it is, but I've stayed at two of the RV resorts a total of four times. Crap internet, whether I try to pay for theirs that's in the park, which is 30, 40 bucks a month, um, or use my, I can't even get my phone internet to work there. It's really weird. So that's the internet deal. Let's see, what else? Uh, I wanna show you, I mean, I've got tons and tons of storage in here. I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough storage, but one of the reasons I got this rig um, all these closets along the side and I've got my little cubby hole up here. My daughter 
uh, got me that head thing for Christmas last year. She said, I got you something kind of fun, but I don't think you'll take it in the RV. I said, oh yeah, I will. So um, love, love my rig. I've got a full kitchen. I've got my full, I don't use that oven, but I've got a, um, a air fryer, air, air, air cooker. Anyway, it looks like a toaster oven. It's up, it, I keep it up in there when I'm not using it but I can use it to toast stuff, to bake stuff, to brown stuff, etc. cetera. Um, this is my little kitchen, and I love my little rack up here. I keep all my vitamins and stuff up there. So, not a full-size refrigerator, but plenty, 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 plenty big enough for one person. Uh, let me show you, let me turn. And I actually, I had a huge spider come in and I ended up <laughs> ended up balling it up in my comforter and throwing it out. I've got a new comforter on the way, but I didn't want to wait to do this video for you guys. Lots of fun storage, plenty of room. This is a queen size bed. And actually that, that mattress was rolled up, um, bought it brand new and I actually carried it in here in a roll. Um, and then my, I love that I have a bathtub. The one thing I thought I was going to miss in my bathroom was a bathtub, and I have one. And believe it or not, yes, I can sit in that bathtub. I've only done it about half a dozen times, but I can do it. Another little fun trick, I've got all these earrings. This is one of those mats that you put uh, in the cabinet, you know, that you put your glasses on in the cabinet. But I realize it's got the little holes in it, so I hang all my all my jewelry on those. And then I've got this rack too, and then that rack. I RV, I can't get a whole lot of, I can't buy furniture and stuff, which I wouldn't want to buy anyway. Um, but I do love jewelry. So I can buy all the jewelry I want. So done a few little, like for example, these carpets that match. I bought all of these about a month ago. Um, up until then, it was a bunch of um, carpet that did not match. Just pieces that I brought from my other house and stuff. All right, let's go out and look at some of the other stuff you guys have been asking me about. You're always asking me, how do I carry the scooter? So I got inspired to go ahead and do this video because I'm, I was carrying this wood. That's a 20 pound bag of wood. Here's the thing. The first ground I was at had a really cool fire pit and I enjoyed my fire pit but every park I've been to since then doesn't have rings. You can do a fire, but you have to have your own, you know, self-contained thing. And I don't have room for a fire pit or was one of these little bad boys. But I, I put it off for four months getting it because I thought, because see how that piece of wood, you can't just put the regular size wood in there. But here's the thing, this, these are little pieces of wood. They're, they're pieces of wood that people would normally use um, to season their barbecue or to get a fire started. But I just was brilliantly enough thinking, you know what? I can find smaller pieces of wood. So I do. I put the smaller pieces in there and I get a nice fire going. And then if I size wood, I'll throw one on top of it and it'll burn just right in there. So that's a really good tip because I went four months with having a fire pit because I didn't know how I was going to get wood in there. But you can buy that wood at um, at Home Depot. That that bag was twenty dollar, and I'll get I'll get probably three fires out of that. Okay, now this is my second scooter. The first scooter I got was nine hundred dollars, and it ran wonderful. Love 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 that scooter, but it was starting to have some issues. It was a two thousand eight. And it was a Lance. This one's a Lance also. So I just bought this one brand new. It had less than a mile on it when I bought it. So everybody asks, how do I carry it? Let me show you the setup. So this is a motorcycle hauler. I got it from, um, oh shit. I knew I'd forget the name of it. But it was less than 200 bucks for this thing. It's got this ramp, but as you can see, this ramp is really, really steep. So, let me show you. Let me show you how we fix that. 
So a cousin of mine, when I got my scooter back in March, he and I came up with this little scenario. And I want to, sh I, I didn't take it out yet because I want to show you. This is an eight foot two by eight board and it fits it fits in my rig now here's how it works do, 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 do. and my cousin figured this out he did the drilling and everything for me but let me flip it so notice that there's a hole there and a hole there and a hole there and a hole up there so what we do is right we do that and then we've got this big bolt that bolts it on there so that you have a really long slope that's much easier to get it up there you'll notice that I've put some I just took one of those noodles from the Dollar Tree this was actually something that you put around actual um, plumbing pipes but just put that on there so that the scooter doesn't get scraped up and um, yeah so that's how we do it now the first scooter I had I was able to put it up the ramp put it on and take it off by myself this one's a little bit wider and it's a little bit heavier so um, and by the way these are the I got a bunch a bunch a bunch of tie downs I had no idea how to use a tie down until now and now I'm a master at it um, so I've learned to ask for help when I get set up at my camp spot I don't um, I don't try to pull that thing off by myself I don't have some big ego about I got to do it all myself I'll just set up like I am here and I'll sit outside and start doing some work And when somebody comes by walking their dog you know or comes by on their golf cart or something I'll say hey would you mind giving me a hand and people always they are the nicest people at these RV resorts. So at first I was looking only for men to help me, but another woman can help too. I just need somebody to hold on to the back of it and help guide it up the ramp to make sure that it doesn't sway off. That's all. Let me look at my notes and see if I told you everything I wanted to tell you. Oh, backup camera. So I showed you inside the camera, right? I wanna show you what is on the back back here. So I got this at Walmart, really just seriously an $80 camera, and there it is. So it's uh, solar powered and Bluetooth, so it stays charged or used, uh, able to use. And when the, when the scooter's on the back, when the camera is on, the scooter, which I hadn't planned on when I first got the rig, when I first got, um, when I first put the camera on, I didn't have my rig yet. I didn't have the, the motorcycle hauler. I just didn't know how I was gonna see behind this thing. So I put that on and then when we put the motorcycle hauler on and the scooter and I could see it in the camera, I was like, yay! <laughs> that way when I'm driving, I don't have to worry about did it fall off and I didn't see it or, or is somebody messing with it? I can see it, it's really great. Okay, so backup camera showed you the how to use a speaker instead of worrying about putting in a big system internet motorcycle ramp fire pit oh two more things to show you men's boots men's boots those happen to actually be my ex-husband's boots so when i first got my rig i read that you should get some men's boots to set up outside so that people think that you're not alone if you're a woman traveling by yourself. 
So I was sharing with him before I even got the rig. This was December and I didn't even find the rig until January. I was telling him, I said, isn't this silly? You know, I need to go find a pair of men's boots and I'll go to a Salvation Army or something. He said, I got a pair you can carry. So it's just a little extra added bonus to still have my ex-husband's boots under my door. Um, but the very first campground that I went to, I'm sitting outside. I, I sit out on the picnic tables and I'm doing my work. Matter of fact, that day I was, I was building a fire. I was building a fire. Guy walks by with his dog. He walks right onto my, my area and says, hey, you traveling alone? And I said, um, I don't think that's an appropriate question to just walk up to a woman and ask her if she's alone. So I, so I was building my fire and I was actually raking around my fire pit and raking up leaves to put in it. So I was like busy. And he just kept talking about how this woman over here was traveling alone and this one over here was working remotely and telling me about, and I was completely ignoring him and not looking at him. And he finally got the point and went away. Um, but I didn't have the boots out yet. After I had that conversation or that intera in interaction with that guy, um, I took the boots and put them outside. And now it's part of my setup. Everywhere I go, once I get all set up, I put the boots outside. And it, so far, I haven't had that happen again. So I think that they actually work. And a little extra pro tip about this, if you do have a date, if you do have someone, someone coming over that's invited, you need to let them know ahead of time that you've got the boots out there because they can think, why is this woman having me come over and there's a pair of men's boots outside? So you kind of need to give them the heads up. And lastly, these lights here, these lights are purple. I got them Halloween time. So right now it's the end of uh, October and I've had a couple of different strings of lights that, that didn't work for different reasons. And I thought, oh, Halloween and Christmas time is here. I'm not going to get just the set of one or three choices that you have in the garden department. I'm going to wait for Christmas. And sure enough, um, I bought some, a, a couple of different sets of lights. I put, so I put lights on my motorcycle too, because it's fun, right? I've got battery operated lights. Right now I've got orange ones on there for Halloween and I'll be putting some Christmas ones on. But right now, pro tip, Christmas time, load up on lights so that you have a choice to put on your awning. And if you have a motorcycle, put them on your motorcycle, the, the battery operated ones. Because if you don't get them at Christmas time, then you're limited during the year to going in the garden department and you're stuck with whatever they got. But right now, I'm going to get, I just bought some, they're, they're packed away. I'll show them to you another time. Um, but I'm going to get three or four different colors and sets so that during the year, I have lots to choose from. So, those are Cammie's tips for different things that I figured out along the, the trail. And I got set up for 10000 or less. So, this rig, if you're looking for... Um, you know what's available. This is a Coachman Leprechaun. It's a 2000 Class C and um, it's 30 foot. Brand new awning. And when I saw it, uh, Marketplace that day, it was $8,000. Sixty thousand miles. So when people tell me they can't do it, they don't have the money, they don't have a hundred thousand, they don't have sixty thousand, they don't have forty thousand, I say, look, I got my rig for eight grand, brand new tires, brand new awning, um, and then my first scooter was nine hundred dollars, and the motorcycle ramp. Even with the extra board and everything is less than 200 bucks. So, and then um, the backup camera was 80. So you can get started for 10,000 or less. I've upgraded my new, but even a brand new scooter, even that thing brand new was only like 2,500 bucks plus taxes and title. And, and I've got the, 
the saddlebags were another 160 and um and then the, the 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 case on the back was a couple hundred bucks but even with that upgrade it wasn't that much i hope that helped let me know if you have any questions i'm traveling the country because i am teaching people how to leverage real estate for real change my book legacy listings real estate for real change charitable gifting of real estate any and all of the 1.3 million nonprofits in this country can benefit from gifts of real estate without taking title without risk without money out of their pocket and we've got a class that we teach that you can sit in for free and we pay real estate agents a full commission to list and liquidate the donations nine b b billion dollars a year with a b is donated to nonprofits through gifts of real estate but it will be 29 billion a year now that we are teaching and helping people to learn how to do this so if you're a real estate agent financial advisor, a business owner who wants to be socially responsible, reach out to me and join our Facebook group, The Real Agents of Change. Bye.